Hello and welcome to Dawn Chorus Writes, a miraculous ladybug fan fiction and audio fiction. This is a special one shot written by Sheikha, narrated by Dawn myself. Hello! And it is for Marachette Monday and it's called Warrior Princess. So I hope you enjoy it. Make sure you go and send Sheikha loads of love for writing it. All her information is down below. Massive shout out and thank you to Crusante for the use of her stunning beautiful picture for the thumbnail all her information is down below make sure you go and send her some love send me some love by smashing that like button comment down below what you think of it and make sure you subscribe so you do not miss out on future one shots like this and series that are happening and future projects to come and i hope you enjoy warrior princess of every Akuma, Ladybug, and Cat Noir had faced. This was definitely the worst. Sting was something out of a nightmare. A scorpion body the size of a car, with a male human torso where the head should be, and a stinger the length of her arm that left people either slashed and bleeding or paralyzed by his toxin. What does Shadow Moth think he is doing? It looks like he emerged an Akuma with a muck. Sting is trashing the city and actually hurting people? Ladybug raged as she ducked through an alley and down a quiet back street to de transform behind a dumpster and recharge Tiki with a cookie. Has Shadow Moth lost what little common decency he had? I don't know, but he seems to be more intent in winning at all costs these days, Tiki mumbled around her cookie. While the Kwame stuffed herself, Marinette's mind raised. Carapace was down, with an anxious Rena attending to him. Viperion had gotten hit with the toxin, as had Vesperia. The rest of the team weren't available for one reason or another. Cat Noir had taken a beating, trying to buy her time to figure out her lucky charm. A cherry blossom. But he was wearing out, and she was running out of ideas. Okay, the Akuma is either in the strap he wore around his wrist or across his bag at his back. He doesn't have anything else unless this is like Soul Crusher and the Akuma isn't on him. But I have no idea who he is or where Akuma could be hiding. It has to be on him. The sound of the battle was drawing closer. How was Cat Noir holding up without her? Hurry up, Tiki, she urged. I'm eating as fast as I can, Marinette. The sounds of boots pounding brought her to a high alert just as Cat Noir ran around the corner. For once, she wasn't the one crashing into someone, but that didn't stop the fall or the pitfall impact with the pavement that resulted from being tackled by someone with a miraculous speed. Marinette! Cat grasped, panting for exertion. What? Is it following? She demanded. He nodded. Then run! Grabbing his wrist, she pulled him to his feet and took off down the back street, looking for somewhere, anywhere, they could hide for a moment and regroup. There! Cat pointed at utility van parked beside an open phone junction box. Thankfully, the driver had left the back door open when he had fled and they scrambled inside, pulling them shut behind them. They sat huddled in the dark, cramped space, listening for the sound of the pursuit. After a few anxious moments, Marinette sighed in relief and turned towards the door. I guess he... The words were barely out of her mouth when Cat grasped a hand over her lips and pulled her back against his chest. Stop! Listen! He hissed, and she froze, feeling his heart pounding hard against her back. Over the sound of her own pulse, she heard an ominous clattering sound like a wave of stones rolling and bouncing down the road. The noise grew and grew until it was like an avalanche all around them and the van shook with its passage. She held her breath, turning her face into his shoulder, trembling in terror. She hadn't felt this vulnerable during a Kuma attack since her first day as Ladybug. Cat held her tightly, giving her all the comfort that a tight embrace could afford. 
The horrible sound started and stopped several times, but then faded into the distance. She waited until Kat's hand over her mouth dropped before she spoke. Are you okay? They both asked at the same time. She nodded. I thought we had cleared all the civilians from the area. Kat whispered worriedly. What are you doing here, Marinette? I was out and got caught in the middle of this when it started. Ladybug found me and told me to hide behind the dumpster. Sorry, she didn't have time to tell me and I thought this street was clear. I didn't mean to lead it to you. He looked so guilty and worried for her that she put her hand on his shoulder to reassure him. He hissed in pain and twitched away from her. Her eyes opened wide as she saw the blood that stained her fingers. His arm was hanging stiffly at his side. Cat, are you hurt? How? Can you use the arm? It's nothing, princess. D don't worry about me. She leveled a stern glare at him and he swallowed, looking away. Marinette. Let me see your hand, she said taking off her jacket. What? Your hand, she demanded. He held out the other hand to her, and his eyes widened in shock as she used his claws to tear the sleeve from her jacket and the body into strips. Marinette, that's your favourite jacket. Why? I can make a new one. I can't have my hero bleeding to death before Ladybug can fix things, she muttered, folding the strips into thick pads. The slice through the suit was clean of toxin, thank goodness, but the 12 centimeter long cut curved over the top of his shoulder and was bleeding freely. I need to get this pad into place to stop the bleeding. Can I peel back the torn part of your suit? It's probably going to hurt. He nodded, breathing deeply as she lifted the leather-like material away from the wound and placed the pad over it before shifting the suit back over it. She could hear him growling softly from the pain, but could tell he was fighting to subdued it, so not to frighten her. Can you move that arm? She tried rolling his shoulder, but his arm still hung limply and he hissed again. That's what I'm afraid of. She quickly tied the sleeve into a sling and settled it around him. He gave her a lopsided grin, but pain still darkened his eyes. You're amazing, princess. His ring beeped its final warning all of a sudden. Cat grabbed her shoulder. Marinette, I need you to turn around and not look, no matter what. Can you do that for me? She nodded. She turned away from him, eyes closed and covered with her hands. I trust you, Marinette, Cat said as she felt the rush of his transformation behind her. There was a silence about two heartbeats and then a quiet, cranky voice whined. Jeez, now... Explain later. Plague, of course. She knew he couldn't reveal her identity, but there was still the risk he might say something that could let Cat know she was Ladybug. He's up quick, buddy. Cat's voice was softer, even though harsh with pain and almost familiar. No, she couldn't know. Cat, is that? My Kwame, yeah. His name's Plague. Nice, too. Well, Hear you again, Plague. You too, princess. The emphasis was soft, but pronounced enough for her to hear it. Plague, Cat grunted from behind her. Will the suit form over the pad I put on Cat's wound? He can't use our arm, and I don't want to risk tying it in place. No problem, said the Kwame. But I expect a week's worth of caramba after this kid. You get it, you get it. Cat moaned. Can you hurry up? This hurts a lot when I'm... me. You're not the only one who got sliced, kid. Give me the backup cheese, too. Marinette tried to smother a giggle behind her hands. She knew she couldn't laugh at them, but hearing the interactions was pretty funny. Plag really was different than Tiki. What's so funny? Cat and Plag asked together. She just giggled more. I didn't know your quarry was such a sourpuss. Cat spluttered and Plague cackled. Oh, she's a keeper, kid. Don't let this one get away. Oh, Plague, claws out. She knew his transformation was complete, but Marinette waited for him to let her know when he was ready. 
He placed a gentle hand on her shoulder and gave it a light squeeze. You can turn round now. She slowly pulled her hand away from her face and looked at him over her shoulder. His vivid green eyes smiled at her from behind a black mass once more. She let out a breath she never knew she was holding as she turned around. Um, Cat, what are we going to do now? First things first, he said seriously. I have to get you somewhere safe. I don't want you in the line of fire, princess. I can slip away while you go and look for Ladybug, she murmured as she straightened the sling around his arm. He shook his head. There's no guarantee that Sting would go for me and not you. And I'm not sure how well I can defend you like this. His cat ears drooped as he sighed. Some hero I am today. Don't you dare, she growled. You are cat noir. Nothing gets you down. We just need to think, that's all. Think indeed. How was she going to find a place to transform with cat trying to keep her safe as Marinette? Wait, hadn't the lucky charm been a sprig of cherry blossom? She looked down at her shirt, her traditional cherry blossom motif barely visible in the dim light. Could that mean it was supposed to Marinette that saved the day, not Ladybug? But if she was going to pull this off, she would need Cat's help and she would have to be careful she didn't let anything slip. Cat? Is it possible that people other than you and Ladybug can use your staff? Yes. Why? What are you thinking, princess? My my mum taught me how to use a bow staff. I'm not as good as you are, of course, but I can fight with it if I need to. And from what I saw before, Ladybug dropped me off. That thing is a giant scorpion, right? The joints are the weak spot, as they are the narrowest. Cat stared at her in shock. Are you suggesting I let you challenge that thing with nothing but my staff to protect you? No way! I can't let anything happen to you, Marinette. You're not multi-mouse right now, you know. She rolled her eyes and grinned at him. What? Is the cat afraid to let the mouse save the day? Or does that I'll steal Plague's cheese? He snorted. No, but you don't have a suit, Marinette. Hawkmoth will see your face. You could be killed or taken hostage. Take it from one who knows. Well, let's just hope Ladybug has enough luck for all of us today, because I don't think you have much of a choice at present. He glowered at her with his panther eyes. Marinette Dupan Chang, there is no way I'm... The clattering sound alerted them that Sting was coming back. The noise grew closer and louder until the van shook. Then everything suddenly went silent. She shivered in terror and Cat wrapped his free arm around her in comfort. One minute passed, then two. After five minutes, she started to wonder if the Akuma was gone. She eased herself into a different position and accidentally jostled an open toolbox on the shelf next to her. It crashed to the metal floor, making the insides of the van ring like a bell. Cat thrust his weapon into her hand. Get ready to... The top of the utility van was sliced away in a squeal of rendering metal. Above them stood the scorpion Akuma, the pointed butterfly symbol hovering in front of his face as he held his tail poised to strike. Give me your miraculous, Cat Noir, and I would let the girl go free he said in a dry, rattled hiss, reminding her of dead leaves blowing over stones. Go breathe either, Shadow Moth, Cat cried beside her. Sting leaned over them. You're not at your best, I see. Why not take it easy on yourself and just hand over your ring? Your bug isn't here to protect you, and I'm sure you wouldn't want anything to happen to your little friend. Don't call me little. She snarled, activating Cat's staff and extending it straight into Sting's square jaw, knocking him backwards. Run! Cat yelled, pushing her towards the door before leaping through the hole in the roof. She burst through the doors, running as fast as her legs could carry her. Tiki came out of her purse and flew at her side. You need to transform, Marinette, she called. Actually, I'm not sure I do, she replied. The lucky charm was a cherry blossom, remember? 
That is Marinette's signature. I put it on almost everything I make. I think the lucky charm was telling me that Marinette is needed this time, not Ladybug. But how are you going to capture the Kuma? I'll improvise. She had nearly made it to the end of the street when she heard a cry from behind her. Cat Noir flew over her head and crashed into the wall of the shop on her right. That rumbled avalanche sound told her that Sting was coming up fast behind her. She rushed to Cat's side. He lay crumpled on the ground, struggling and failed to raise on his good arm. I'm sorry, Marinette, he grasped as blood trickled from a bad cut on his scalp. The sight of the dark bead rolling down his face, stained the skin of his jaw, made her tremble but not with fear. Marinette trembled with rage. She turned round, facing the nightmare that was barreling down on them, Cat's staff clenched firmly in her hands. Marinette, you need to run! No, I'm not leaving you. But you could get killed! So could you. Now let me think. The giant scorpion was rushing for them, his deadly tail curved over his shoulder and ready to strike. The thought of Kat's injured fueled her anger and everything became clear. She ran full speed at the Kuma, everything else disappearing except for the burn of her muscles and the space under the scorpion's body. As she drew close, she extended Kat's staff and slammed it right into the joints of the creature's legs as he ran right underneath her. She heard a rattling hiss, followed by an impact on the road behind her as she ploughed through the remaining pairs of legs. Turning, she swung the staff hard against Sting's poison tail, knocking it to the monster's shoulder and slicing the strap of the bag he wore on his back. She didn't even hesitate long enough to watch the dark butterfly emerge. She leapt onto the kuma back, heft the repulsive tail with its deadly blade and slashed at the butterfly as it started to flutter away. The blade split the evil thing in half and it turned white as it fell lifeless to the ground. Sting froze, but did not dissolve into the dark smoke to reveal the victim. That was right. She had thought that it was a combination of a cumin and muck. Marinette leapt down and walked around to face the frozen monster, her muscles tense with suppressed rage. I know you can hear me, Shadow Moth. No one hurts Cat Noir when I'm around. I don't need a magic suit or Ladybug's partner to take down the worst you've got. You think I'm afraid of an insect like you? Touch one hair on my cat's head and I will come for you myself. Is that clear? There was a long pause for a moment before a white feather was released from the strap's bracelet around Sting's wrist and the monster melted away to reveal a young man in his early twenties. He blinked looking around him in confusion before his eyes lighted on her. Ladybug? Marinette smiled. Nope, just someone helping out, I'm afraid. Are you okay? I think so. Good. Can you stay with Cat Noir over there while I go and find Ladybug? She still needs to fix things and she may have been hurt or something. Yeah, sure. Anything you say, miss? Marinette, Kat said from behind her. She glanced over at him and found he managed to prop himself against the wall behind him, clutching his injured arm. Marinette, Du Pang Chang, hero of Paris. She snorted and rolled her eyes. Sure, I was just a mad girl with a borrowed stick. Now you stay, put. I'm going to go and see if I can find Ladybug to fix things. She took off down the street ran round the corner and behind the same dumpster she had started from. That was amazing, Marinette! Tiki cheered. You were so brave, taking on the Akuma with only Cat's staff to protect you? She flew up to her face and gave her a quick cuddle. Just don't do that again, okay? Not without me at any rate. Sure thing, Tiki, but I need to fix things so I can get back to Cat. But as who? Marinette or Ladybug? Ladybug? She needs to apologise for not being there for him. Tiki, spots on. Back behind the mask, she swung up to the rooftops and went back to where she had left Cat from a slightly different angle. 
She landed beside the victim and cat next to the wall. I got it from here, thanks, she told the victim. He nodded, looking guilty, and scurried off. Cat, are you okay? She asked worriedly. Marinette said you were hurt. Yeah, he grunted. I can't move my arm. Where were you, LB? I was getting worried, but I couldn't leave Marinette alone with the kuma. She sighed, pulling out a yo-yo. I got stuck somewhere as a civilian while Tiki recharged. There was a witness, so I couldn't just transform and get back to you. Sorry it took so long. Lucky charm. A roll of bandages landed in her hand. In seconds, Ladybug's cure was swirling through the city and over her partner. The tension in her gut eased as the pain was washed away from his face. Ah, that's much better, he sighed, rolling his former injured shoulder and flexing his claws fingered. The jacket she had used as bandages and slings was as good as new and lay folded on the ground. I guess I should get this back to Marinette, she said, picking it up and dusting any dirt off it. Ladybug, may I take it to her? Cat asked softly, holding out his hand. You've had a long day, Cat. You should go home and rest. He shook his head. No, this is something I need to do, Elby. She saved my life, you know. His eyes took on a faraway look and his smile was almost tender. Marinette was amazing, Elby. She faced down that super Akuma with just my staff and a glint in her eye. And then she told off Shadow Moth. And all without a mask or a miraculous. I saw it and I can barely believe it. She smiled slightly. Wow, that is incredible. I guess you can take it back to her this evening then. She handed the jacket to him. I'm really sorry I didn't get here in time, Cat. He shot her a grin and gave her shoulder a squeeze. Hey, it could have happened to me too. I was just lucky I was with someone I trusted when I needed to de-transform. If Marinette had seen me without the mask, she would have kept my secret, even if it made things awkward for a while. Her breath caught in her throat. Why would that make things awkward? Is she a relative or something? She knew that wasn't possible, but what could he possibly mean by awkward? <laughs> Thank goodness, no. She goes to my school, that's all. Her mind froze. Cat Noir goes to my school. But you just said you trusted her. Why the... Thank goodness. Wait, was he blushing? Uh, no reason. You should get going. You're going to change back soon. No point in having two close calls in the same day. See you next patrol. And he was off like a shot. Why was he acting so embarrassed and talking so fast? She glanced around and found an alcove where she could detransform back, giving Tiki a cookie. That's the last of them until we get back home. That's okay, Marinette. The Kwame replied. Was it just me or was Cat acting weirder than usual? She asked. Cat just had a life-threatening experience and you saved him. That is enough to cause anyone to act weird, isn't it? True, she said, twirling the end of her pigtails around her finger absentmindedly. But he told me? I mean, ladybug me, that he goes to my school. He shouldn't have done that. Marinette, you should know better than anyone that a miraculous ladybug fixes only the physical damage. The emotional scars still have to be healed and dealt with. He's probably just overwhelmed and didn't think that would be a big of a clue. After all, hundreds of students go to your school, don't they? Yeah, it's just one more thing that's going to drive me crazy, I guess. As if Adrian and Kat weren't enough already, Tiki asked with a teasing smirk. Tiki, she groaned, you know I'm trying to let Adrian go. I'm tired of not being able to be myself around him. I've always put too much pressure on myself over him, you know that. Yes, and what about Kat? 
She swallowed hard, and her heart raced at how he had been worried for her. Had held her clothes in the van when they were hiding from Sting, and how he had wanted her to run when he couldn't protect her. She hadn't thought about it at the time, but it had felt good to be close to him, wrapped in his scent of sandalwood and leather. It would make things complicated, especially now when Shadow Moth is creating these super akumas. Oh, I don't know, Tiki. I'm almost 17. You'd think I would have figured this out by now. Having finished her cookie, Tiki flew up to nuzzle her cheek. It's okay, Marinette. You deserve to be happy too, despite all the worry and fear. Love is a powerful force too. After all, being Ladybug does not mean you are destined to be alone. Thanks, Tiki. Let's take the quick way home, shall we? Spots on. A few minutes of the breeze running through her hair helped clear her mind on the way home. She stopped a few blocks away and re-transformed, knowing it was likely that Cat was already there. Sure enough, she could see him skulking on her balcony as she approached. She checked in with her parents before heading up to her room. She climbed the stairs to her loft bed and then out onto her balcony. Hey, princess, Cat said softly. Even his eyes were smiling. Hi, Cat, she said, rubbing her forearms in the brisk breeze. You're sure lucky you got to take the express. Definitely one of the perks of being a hero. You never have to take the bus, he quipped, though it didn't seem like his heart was in it this time. He looked distracted. Oh, you're shivering. I brought your jacket back. Good as new thanks to dozens of tiny little bug tailors. Thanks. She took it from him and slipped it on. How was your shoulder? He flexed his arm for her, like he had the first time he had talked to her as Marinette, though he had groaned and filled out a lot since then. She chuckled and shook her head. Silly cat, she murmured, stepping forward to stand next to him at the railing. You had me worried, you know. He rested his hand on the railing next to hers and sighed. Part of the hero business, I'm afraid. They stood side by side, looking out as dusk fell over the city. The gathering darkness shrouded them from view, but Marinette didn't turn on the string of fairy lights that normally lit her balcony at night. She felt safer with her feelings hidden in the dark. Then, after a long silence, You saved my life today, Marinette. His voice was low and impossible soft, as if he was caressing her name and it made her shiver despite her jacket. I, I just did what you do every day, she stammered, refusing to look at him. A gentle, clawed hand turned her head and all she could see were green, glowing eyes that smiled at her in the dark. No, you didn't, he whispered. You trusted me enough to let me de-transform and not feel scared. And I knew I could trust you not to look if I asked you to. The hand that had turned her brushed against her face tenderly. You sacrificed your favourite jacket to bind my wound. You face down that Akuma monster with only my staff to protect you. You challenged Shadow Moth and gave him a right cheering out. He chuckled. His thumb caressed her cheek and she swallowed hard. I always knew my princess was brilliant and beautiful. But I never knew you had such fire in you, Marinette. She clutched the railing to keep her hands from shaking, but it didn't stop the hammering in her heart or the cloud of butterflies that took wings to her stomach. You rescued me so many times, I was just returning the favour. He cradled her face in both hands and stared into her eyes. My cat, he murmured. What? That's what you called me. You were screaming at Shadow Moth and you said, Touch one hair on my cat's head and I will come for you myself. Her cheeks were burning. He was so close. Oh, his eyes. There was something in his gaze aside from the gentle glow, but she was afraid to think about it too much, lest the spiral down into confusion. I 
just... I didn't mean I... Shh, he soothed. I never belonged to anyone before. Not really. I used to hope that Ladybug would love me, but I gave up on that dream a while ago. He pressed his forehead against hers, the nose brushing. Do you know why I wear a bell, princess? No, she winced as her voice came out in a squeak, but he didn't seem to notice. A cat only needs a bell if he's lost, he whispered, his breath tickling her skin. But once he finds someone to take him in, to care about him, to love, then he isn't lost anymore. Cat, I... Your cat, he purred, pulling her in an inch or two closer. That is, if you meant it. I don't know what I would do if anything had happened to you. She whispered from her throat gone dry, tears burning her eyes. I was so afraid for you today, Marinette, he breathed, running gentle fingers along her face. I've already lost so much, and in a way, I've lost Ladybug too. Or at least the dream I had of her for so long, but you? You have always been so real to me, princess. If I lost you, I... <laughs> I would... It would break me. Those soft, haltering words trickled into her like the tears that trickled from her eyes. I love you, Cat Noir. I love you, Cat Noir. She whispered, twisting her fingers together between them. I have for a while, but I have been trying to let someone go too. I have for a while, but I have been trying to let someone go too. It hurts, I know, and if you can't like that, I, I mean, who can see you as anything but a princess? He asked indignantly, then he laughed. I suppose I should count myself lucky that he didn't, otherwise you wouldn't be here with me. But I love you, Marinette. I have for a while, and I fought it off with everything I had, but... He leaned in and gently brushed her lips with his, setting off a chain reaction along her nerves. Today made me realise that I had to tell you because we don't know what is going to happen tomorrow. I didn't want to leave without letting you know how much I love you. Words had always been her downfall when it came to love. They were either a flood or a drought with nothing sensible in between. But she knew in that moment that the time for words and overthinking and worrying was gone and she had made a choice. And she chose him. She reached up and touched his bell, making it sing out in the dark before wrapping her hand around it to pull him down. I don't want you lost any more, my cat, she breathed and kissed him. His arms crept around her, pulling her closer until there wasn't any space between them. His purr vibrated against her, reaching into her chest until it felt like she was part of him. So, he whispered when they parted, who do I need to thank for this blindness? I don't want you making him miserable, Cat. He doesn't deserve it. He's still my friend, and I hope it will stay that way. He held up a hand in surrender. Okay, princess, I won't do anything about it, even if the poor boy needs his eyes examined. Good. Besides, I think Gabriel Agress would have an aneurysm if he so much as tousled Adrian's hair, hero or not. Her giggle faded abruptly to a silence as she took in the shocked expression on Kat's face. He looked like he had been slammed into a building by an Akuma. Marinette, are you telling me? Adrian Agress, the model? You... She shook her head. It was never about him being a model. He's just so generous and honest and kind. He's been there for me through some tough times and he means the world to me, but... She shrugged. After three years in the friend zone, I figured it was time to move on. Cat seemed to be having trouble coming to grips with this. 
you and Adrian? Whoa. Our, our friend's cat, nothing more. He never saw me that way, remember? Besides, no matter how great he is, he is still a person just like you and me. No need to freak out about it. He pulled her close once more. I'm so sorry, Marinette. I never knew. You didn't deserve that. It's not your fault, Cat. She tried, rest her head against his chest. You don't have to feel sorry. It is what it is, and even though it hurt, it led me here to you. No. If I had... If it wasn't for Ladybug, I, I mean... She looked up at him with a frown. Was he trembling? Cat, what's wrong? He pressed his forehead to hers and let out a sigh. Marinette, I know we have hung out from time to time, but why do you think I knew I could trust you when I detransformed today? Because you knew I was Multimouse that one time, and because we're friends, I guess. He shook his head gently, brushing her nose with his. We have been friends much longer than you know. More than friends. And if it wasn't for Ladybug? She reached up and cupped his face in her hands, pulling away just enough for her to see his eyes. He goes to my school. We have been friends for longer than I know. No. I can't know. Cat, you can't tell me these things, remember? I need to. Who else would have done what you did today? Who else would I trust enough to let inside my suit? His eyes widened, his face darkened with a blush in the city light. I mean, that is, when I was injured, you... She giggled and blushed as well. I know what you meant, Cat. What if I get akumatized? I could reveal your identity or put you and your family in danger. You've never been akumatized, though. He said confidently. I would have remembered. Cat knew her favourite jacket. He knew she hadn't been akumatized. He went to her school. Friends. I'm so sorry, Marinette. I never knew. No, I, I can't know, she gasped, clutching her head, trying to bury the clues he had given her. I would never forgive myself if something happened to you because of me and... and... And Ladybug? Gentle hands pulled hers away from her head. Plague tells me once your mind has been given enough information, you can't really keep yourself from knowing. He kissed her cheek, purring like thunder in her ears. You already know both sides of me. Please, Marinette, I need you to see me. But why? Why risk your identity? I'm not worth that. He pulled her in for a kiss, strong and desperate and smelling of spices and a garden after the rain. You are worth everything, Marinette, he whispered, his breath brushing her lips like a shadow's kiss. You and Adrian, I never knew. If it wasn't for Ladybug, I trust you, Marinette. They were friends outside the mask. He went to her school. If it wasn't for Ladybug... I know I'm not good with jokes. The girl I'm in love with doesn't like them either. If it wasn't for Ladybug. She gripped his face and pulled back, staring deeply into his eyes. Adrian, she whispered, not daring to hope. His smile was so wide and happy, her breath caught in her throat. Hello, princess. All she could do was stare at him while her heart frantically tried to kickstart itself. She was pretty sure she wasn't breathing either. When she didn't respond, his smile shrank into something more worried. Marinette? Sorry, she murmured faintly. I'm just... struggling to fit it all together, I guess. Yeah, he chuckled nervously, rubbing the back of his neck. I guess it would be weird to find out you were letting go of someone in order to love someone else. Who turned out to be them, huh? You have no idea, she groaned, all too aware of the irony of the situation. I never even... 
I wouldn't have guessed that you, Cat Noir, you act so different. Great. Now she was back to babbling incoherent sentences. Fantastic. The golden light of the city made her blush even darker. Yeah, well, being Cat Noir, he is a freedom I never had. Freedom to be crazy, wild, flirtatious. To feel, Marinette. But I never needed that with you. You have always let me be me. Whatever that means, I hope this doesn't change anything. That you still... He didn't finish his thought and she could see the fear in his eyes. It cut her to the heart. Adrian? Cat? Of course not. She pulled him into a tight hug and heard his heart pounding just as fast as hers. I meant what I said earlier. That I didn't fall in love with you because you were a model. It is who you are inside that matters most to me. And that stays the same whether you are wearing the mask or not. She felt her cheeks burning. It's just strange to think that you, Adrian, love me. Call me your princess. My warrior princess, he said, pulling back to look down at her with a proud smile. You are amazing, Marinette. I've always known that, but I wish I had realised how I felt about you sooner. <laughs> me too. He leaned in, pressing his forehead against hers. But I guess it doesn't matter now, as long as I can call you mine. I was always yours, ever since you gave me your umbrella. He kissed her again, full of sweetness and hunger and longing. She melted into his kiss and ran her hands up into his hair, pulling him closer. Marinette knew there would be complications, problems, that she would need to tell him her identity sooner than she had ever planned. There would undoubtedly be breakouts and hurt feelings and misunderstandings, but he was worth it. This relationship, this love, was a rock in the storm, or her life, or she could be the same for him. Just for now, Marinette could kiss Adrian, her kitty, as the moon rose. This was a moment for Marinette, not Ladybug, and she intended to keep it. Thank you for listening to Warrior Princess. Oh, that was epic, wasn't it? It's was beautiful. Um, make sure you smash that like button. Show me how much you love it. Show Sheikah how much you love her writing. Make sure you go and send her some love and check out her information down below. Comment down below what you think think of it and make sure you subscribe so you do not miss out on beautiful one shots like this series that are happening at the moment and any goodies that are coming your way very soon and i hope you are good and i will speak to you soon bye